the Sky Sports Formula One coverage has got a big problem, and the name of that problem is Danica Patrick. I've been thinking about doing a video about this and wondering how I should tackle it, saying she should be sacked, they've got to get rid of her, it's a disaster. Where I've landed is, I'm just going to show you what the hell's going on. But I do remember doing a video about the Jacques Villeneuve, Daniel Ricciardo thing recently, where I pointed out, hey, uh, Jacques Villeneuve isn't such a great guy, but standing right next to him is Danica Patrick, and she doesn't have her fans either. But then some other stuff popped up in the news in the last few days, or came to my attention in the last few days, and it's it's so much worse than that. So we're going to cover some of that now. But first off, who is Danica Patrick? Let's get that out of the way, in case you don't know. Hmm, me, the patriarch of a bird racing dynasty. Congratulations, Homer. Danica Patrick in my thoughts. That's right, Homer. I'm contractually obligated by my sponsors to appear in random fans' fantasies. Better not tell Marge about this. You brickyard bimbo! Huh. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Ended that a little too soon. No. Oh. Uh. What they don't suspect is that I'm into this. Huh. Oh! Show's never been better. So Danica Patrick, a female racer. What? Yes, a female racer. Believe it or not, Danica Patrick, in her day, was quite a successful racer. She won some IndyCar races. One of the real hopes for women in Formula One or racing or motor racing in general, and I'm a big advocate for women in motor racing. One of the things that has caught my eye about Danica Patrick is how despite being a successful woman and a race car driver, she's so reviled by females <laughs> who you would think would be championing her. She has some very controversial opinions about women and their abilities to drive. So let's take a look at some of those. This was July last year. Danica Patrick under fire for feminine mind comments during Sky F1 broadcast. This was during the Formula One broadcast. ex indy car and NASCAR driver Danica Patrick has come under criticism for some of her comments, suggesting the skill set and mindset needed for racing is not natural for females. With Patrick now part of the Sky Formula One broadcast team, it came as a surprise and disappointment to some observers when she offered a rather negative take on the chances of females progressing into Formula One, suggesting it is not normal for the female mind to be geared towards what is needed to make that happen. Asked by a young girl during the Formula One jun Juniors broadcast if she would like to see women compete in Formula One, Patrick said, as I've always said in my whole career, it takes a hundred guys to come through to find a good one. And then it takes a hundred girls. It's just the odds are not in favor of there always being one or being many of them. So this idea has come up before and I've always challenged it. I challenged it when Daniel Ricciardo said it. The reason there aren't women in Formula One is because there aren't enough women trying to get into Formula One. The problem with that attitude is when you look at it, there's plenty of artificial barriers and a lot of mentality like this that's uh, preventing and deterring women from getting into Formula One. What the hell else is going on? Because that in itself, that's bad. <laughs> like, it's bad. But people could take or leave that. What has got everybody really scratching their heads about Danica Patrick and really asking whether she's okay? So what we're going to watch and I'm going to react to now is Danica Patrick's podcast, which is called Pretty Intense, which I guess... I don't know. As far as names go, whatever. But it's more the content that has got people worried. This is a guest that she had on a few weeks ago called Elizabeth April. The whole thing is completely batshit crazy. But there's a couple of minutes at the start in particular that have got everybody talking. So let's just have a listen. And we'll see if we can even make it through this without needing to take corrective action. <laughs> Mostly from what I've channeled and remote viewed, it is a group of individuals who are fighting to contain the information, fighting to contain the awakening, fighting to suppress the people, fighting mm -hmm. to create more fear because mm -hmm. they just want control. They don't care about money. Money mm -hmm. is something that they've created, right, to control us. And our population is at a certain point where we're uncontrollable. There's only one appropriate reaction. Wow, I guess this is a big moment. I should care about it. This is what she's talking about. The majority of this group of individuals is reptilian. Mm -hmm. But I do want to say that not all reptilians are bad, right? Mm -hmm. We do have good reptilians, just like we have good and bad humans. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She's a reptile person. She's one of those people who thinks that there's like people walking around who look normal but underneath their makeup and underneath their mask, reptiles, baby, they're lizard people. You might hear, oh, there's people walking around and they look like normal, but they're actually 
lizard people. But don't even worry about it. Like, that's true, but don't even worry about it because some of them are good. They're not all bad. And they believe that, you know, this planet is rightfully theirs because they're the ones who were here long before. Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! Humans were. It's prophesized that human beings, right, this hybrid species that we are, are, are meant to be here. The reptilians are free to be here as well, as long as they're okay with the shifting of the energies. And they're not okay with that. Yeah. They've got to be okay with the shifting of the energies, but they're not okay with that. Self-explanatory. Let's watch for Danica Patrick's uh, pushback here, because this is obviously crazy and this person needs help. Danica Patrick's obviously about to extend a hand here and say, you're a troubled person and I'm here to help you. And we're going to get through this together. Refreshing on the last time that we talked. And yeah. Um, you hit on a theme that I'd heard from a couple other people was just that we were at this sort of choice point. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I thought that we'd just kind of start off with a check-in of like, how are we doing <laughs> with being at this choice point in, in, in history on this planet as a culture? How are we doing? Okay. A little bit worrying that she didn't challenge any of those ideas. So she's talked to this person before about this and other people still had her on the podcast. We're doing all right. Um, we're not failing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's good. We're not totally. That's good. Totally a plusing it either. Mm -hmm. um, but what's happening right now. So, you know, 2024 to 2028 is this huge cycle. Mm -hmm. So I've been talking. What happens between 2024 and 2028? I wonder. Is there anything four years starts this year, goes for four years, anything come to mind? Nothing. So this is our next really big cycle that we're entering into. And what we're going to see between 2024 and 2028 is the uprising of the solutions, the uprising of the new earth frequency. Hmm. <laughs> You said the Anunnaki were the ones that told them they, they couldn't be in power anymore, right? I think the last time we talked, you said maybe it was the, no, the Anunnaki left too. It was yeah. the Galactic Federation that said the, Galactic, the humans. The Galactic Federation, that's who it was. Yeah. Planet. Anunnaki are like, bye. And the reptilians are like, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? So what the hell is going on here? To give YouTube their credit, they do have a link to Wikipedia here about reptilian humanoids. And I haven't read all of this, but you'll notice the headings. Reptilian humanoid in folklore, reptilian humanoid in fiction, fantasy, games, science fiction, and then right down the bottom here, conspiracy theory. The reptilian conspiracy theory alleges that shape-shifting reptilian aliens control Earth. It is widely regarded as bang, 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 anti-Semitic. That's why I think this is such a big problem, and I don't think people are really cottoning on to this. It's not just a fun little idea that people have. This person thinks that reptiles people are real and they walk around and control the earth. It has been around for a long time, this conspiracy theory, and it has done a lot of damage and it is deeply rooted in racism. It is deeply racist. You can Google that as much as you like. I'm just a stupid F1 YouTuber and podcaster, right? So what the hell do I know? But let's have a look at something else. Let's, let's get another source in on this to make sure we understand what's going on. This is from Vox. Lizard people, the greatest political conspiracy ever created. This was nine years ago. Last November, the political fate of America was once again put to a vote. But for the millions of Americans who believe in lizard people, this, this vote had bigger implications, like thwarting the ongoing plot of world domination. The idea of shape-shifting lizards taking human form is a plot to rule America and the world has become one of the most majestic and marvelous conspiracy theories created by mankind, or lizard kind, if you will. Okay. As pundits continue to extrapolate on what the Republican win in the midterms means for the country, there are people around this country, America, who hope their votes did something crucial, kept the country safe from lizard people for the next few years. Here is a brief guide to this world of lizard people, true believers. What is a lizard person? It's just what it sounds like. Lizard people are cold-blooded humanoid reptilians who have the power to shape-shift into human form. 
it goes into some of the history here. If you start Googling this, this name David Icke will come up a lot. He is one of the real main people pushing this forward. Uh, these creatures have had their claws in humankind since ancient time. World leaders like Queen Elizabeth, George W. Bush, the Clintons, and Bob Hope are lizard people. In this uh, Danica Patrick interview as well, she also points out that Justin Bieber and Adele are lizard people. Encroaching on other conspiracy theories territory, David Icke even claims that the lizards are behind secret societies like the Freemasons and the Illuminati, as reported in 1998. Next heading. Wait, people actually believe this stuff? Yes. Our subject for today believes it. How many Americans believe in lizard people? Back in, Amer back in April of 2013, public policy polling conducted a poll about conspiracy theories like aliens and imposter Paul McCartney and, of course, lizard people. And the polling organization found that 4% of Americans believe in lizard people, while another 7% were unsure. People believing in lizard people, I can understand. People being unsure, i just not sure. What, what aren't you sure about? How do those who believe in lizard people know when someone is a lizard person? Here's the list of lizard person tells. Green eyes, good eyesight or hearing, good eyesight or hearing, having red hair, a sense of not belonging to the human race, unexplained scars on the body, love of space and low blood pressure. What do lizard people want? World domination. Is there any actual documentation of lizard people affecting the American government? Nope. Which famous celebrities are allegedly lizard people? Alleged lizard people are always A-listers. And the list of ale alleged lizard people includes Barack Obama, Donald Rumsfeld, showing that lizard people transcend party lines, Madonna, Katy Perry, Bill Clinton, and Angelina Jolie. Am I a lizard person? Possibly. Only you can know for sure. When I say believing in lizard people is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, I mean, I've, as I've come to learn over the last four or, four or five years, Conspiracy theories, almost all of them are, can be traced back to some kind of racist origins, but essentially you've got to think about who historically has looked at particular groups of humans as being subhuman, as being outsiders, as being uh, less deserving of certain things compared to us pure humans, right? Who historically has done that? Can you think of anybody? Think of anybody from the 30s and 40s who might have seen, seen those who weren't completely human as being less worthy of, uh, you know, all of our wonderful human liberties. It's this sort of thinking that lays a foundation that it's okay to treat people differently if they're not like us. And from there, you can take that kind of thinking to a lot of really bad places. That's what worries me about this kind of stuff. So Danica Patrick has been spending her time in the US uh, attending far right conferences, tweets out her support for Donald Trump and the far right. Again, if it was just a political thing, that would be one thing. If it was just, I support Republicans or I support Donald Trump, that would be one thing. But when you look into this lizard people conspiracy theory, it's extremely worrying. And I don't think it's cool. And I, I think it's time for Sky F1 to actually do something about this because people will make up their own minds. And I think that Danica Patrick has enough people who don't like her and actively dislike her and hate her and want to see her pulled off the coverage. But I mean, I really think that putting this kind of stuff out there is so harmful and damaging when you actually get into it and know what they're talking about. I, I, don't, I don't see how Sky F1 can't take action right now. I want to be able to watch F1 without worrying about whether the presenters know whether Godzilla Minus One is a documentary or not. 